You can't defeat them, so give up trying. Here's two ways to think of it. The first way is that Jesus relied upon the scriptures and upon the word that his father had spoken to him that he was already a son. So here's a thing that I do with lots of young people who come to me and say, I've got this problem with whatever it is. And I say to them, okay, this is what I want you to do for a week. I want you to find the baptism and the transfiguration narrative. And I want you to place your name where the word son is. And the first one is, of course, this is my Heath, who I love, who I'm very proud of. And then it's, this is Heath, whom I love, who I'm very proud of, listen to him. It changes everything because there's the very basis of everything we need. All of our appetites are met. All of our approval is found. All of our ambitions are settled right there in that moment. Wow, mic drop. This is a mic drop. Boom. Welcome to the Everyday Disciple Podcast, where you'll learn how to live with greater intentionality and an integrated faith that naturally fits into every area of life. In other words, discipleship as a lifestyle. This is the stuff your parents, pastors, and seminary professors probably forgot to tell you. And now, here's your host, Caesar Kalinowski. Hey, Heath, how's it going today, brother? Good, man. We got a cool show. Yes, it is going to be a cool show. We're going to dig into the things in our hearts that most of us never even heard about with a pretty awesome, very awesome special guest who's just a great friend of mine. Yeah, Mike Breen. Yep. We uncorked who it is. Tell <laughs> us a bit about Mike, how you know him, why you love him. Well, I love Mike. I met Mike, I don't know, several years ago doing conferences, traveling around, talking about discipleship and missional living and missional community life. And we kept running into each other and our wives ended up meeting and we would kind of, we found that we would just finish up our speaking engagements at the hotels or conference centers. We would always just steal away for like two of our other loves, which was great food and a good glass of wine. And so we just kind of built a friendship out of that. And then God led us to do some ministry together and various things. And so absolutely one of the smartest, most generous people I've ever met and not even kidding you. And some of our listeners have heard of Mike Breen already, guaranteed. Sure. And um, he's part of 3DM, 3D Movements. Yep. And they have done training all over the world on missional living and disciple making and discipleship culture. And it's phenomenal stuff. And I've yeah. learned a ton from it. And um, 3DM and our world, we partnered together on something that our listeners probably heard of called Launch, yep. which is also training and how to live missionally and all that. So super excited to have Mike Breen on today. Yeah. Hey, Mike, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad to be with you. Caesar. And uh, thank you, Heath, as well, for sorting all this out. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's yeah. good to have you. And listen, I, I'm going to dive right in because this is going to be, I know, a packed, <laughs> it's going to be a packed conversation. And I kind of asked you all, offline, th- but this is, Sally's good. You're all good. Everything's happening good in family life. We are absolutely deliriously happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very British answer, Mike. I got I to gotta be honest with you. Let me ask yeah. you the first question. As parents or pastors or any kind of leader at a church, people maybe who lead small groups or missional communities, um, you've been in ministry a super long time. What patterns of either temptation or areas of character issues have you seen that need to be addressed if, if we're going to live fruitful lives and have lasting ministry? Like, and we've talked and pre-talked about this a little bit, so I kind of know where you're going, but like, what what patterns have you seen? I tend to look at my own life and the temptations I face and the frailties that I have, and then try to frame that with the scriptures. And when I do that, I, I generally go to the temptations of Jesus, who goes into the wilderness right after his baptism. He hears the voice of his father, the Holy Spirit descends. And then the very first thing that the Holy Spirit does is to drive him into the wilderness. The word in the scriptures is literally to drive. It doesn't often translate it into English that way, but that's what it says. Hmm. So the Holy Spirit drives hmm. Jesus into the wilderness as if there's no choice. There's no, there's no opportunity for some other agenda to be had. This is the most important thing right now. And there Jesus has his identity tested 
by three kinds of temptation, ambition, approval, and, um, and appetite. The, obviously, appetite is turning stones into bread. He's hungry. It's 40 days of fasting. Approval is jumping off the temple and having the thousands of people that throng at the base of Temple Mount uh, see him being held by angels uh, as the prophecy in the Psalms suggests uh, will happen, uh, floating to the ground. And uh, I think the devil's just suggesting, you know, it'd be a great way to start your ministry with this. I mean, be, uh, you know, like first century lights and lasers at a big mega church. <laughs> And uh, and then I got I got to pause so, you there though, Mike, because I don't know that yeah. I don't know that Jesus would actually get hired at most of the mega churches these days. But that might be a topic for another episode. <laughs> another episode, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he might get hired, but I think he'd get fired. Um, the uh, and then of course the other one is uh, is ambition, where uh, where of course Jesus wants his kingdom to go to every nation, and of course the devil is currently. Um, the rebel king in charge of those nations. And uh, Jesus never actually uh, confronts that or or even suggests that there's anything different to that. That's obviously a scriptural truth that, G- that, uh, that Jesus mm. is uh, just assuming to be true. That's good. And, um, and he's offering, uh, the devil's offering, as long as he's allowed to maintain his position of worth. The, the word for worship, in English, is to give somebody their worth. And so he says, if you wor- worship me, that doesn't, I think, intend to mean that Jesus somehow is going to start praying to the devil. I mean, that's not a temptation for Jesus. Mm. But um, but allowing the devil to maintain his position of honor, his position of worth, uh, in other words, you know, unrivaled um, ownership, then the devil will give him all the nations. And so those three temptations of uh, appetite, approval, and ambition they're the things that help me understand usually what's going on. The devil doesn't have new ideas, and certainly he's not going to have better ideas than the ones that he had as he tried to confront the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. So as we have to assume that they're the ones that we're going to get ourselves. So this this is interesting because you connect these three, and this is kind of a bomb drop right at the beginning, Mike, is appetite, ambition, and approval, but you connected them all to identity. And, and like you had just said, this— yeah. This temptation uh, with Jesus in the wilderness yeah. is following right after hearing his father's voice, where his father said, this is my son, and I'm well pleased with you. You bring me great joy. It's right after we get this audible, public affirming of Jesus' identity. And it's interesting yeah. that you sum up these three temptations of appetite, ambition, and approval connected to identity. How, how do you see that all connecting to identity? Take us a little deeper on that. That's really powerful. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know how deep I am, uh, Caesar. But, um, <laughs> but the, the, the thing about appetite is that, you know, Jesus makes it clear that what he is doing is he's depending upon the words of his father, and so, and so clearly, he is saying that my identity as a son means that I'm dependent upon my father who I trust to provide for me. And so and so when we're finding ourselves running after the appetites of life, you know, money, sex, and power, when we're when we're running after the appetites of life, food, drink, the 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 pleasures of the flesh, if you like, then generally what we're saying to God is that we don't trust him to fill the needs that we know are within us. And so it is an identity issue because it's basically saying that we don't trust God to do that. And generally that means that there's a bit of a kind of a disconnect as to understanding him as a providing loving father. Mm. Yeah, and also I'll, I'll, I'll insert my own identity as provision or something, yeah. something else, and that, yeah. that will satiate my appetite in this area or that. Yeah, I'll come up with I'll come up with a better solution to this feeling that I have inside of need. And of course, you know, I mean, you know, not to get too graphic, but th- this kind of this vast plague of pornography is built on the suggestion that you can find 
the answer to this need within you? And uh, of course, you can't. Mm. Yeah. The other person that can provide for you in any way that is finally satisfying is the one who made you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, let's keep going. Let's walk through some of the other implications or maybe outgrowths that may crop up in our lives for each of these three drivers. You were just you were just talking about appetite a little bit. Yeah, the approval one's interesting, isn't it? Because I think it's, uh, I, I don't know how many of your listeners are based in America, but America is such a performance kind of culture and such a culture of approval. You know, you're, you're approved of for a whole series of different things that 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 people are looking for. You know, the things that, that, that make us look good, the things that uh, make us sound good, the things that make us um, appear to be smart or powerful or whatever. And, um, and those approvals are the ones that we can very quickly begin to look for rather than the simple approval that comes from our father who says, this is my child, I love this child, and I'm very pleased with them. I mean, the interesting thing is, is that the approval for Jesus came before he did anything. Yeah, powerful. He didn't do, he didn't do a single thing, and yet his father approved of him. And, um, and we speak a lot on the show about do to be, like that's the beast, that's the way of the world, is that you have to do to be, to find an identity, to be approved, to be valuable. And this this speaks exactly to that. This this yeah exactly, yeah. and and the and the ambition thing. I mean, you know, if we were if we were able to have a bit longer on this, then we would probably go back and look at how these three temptations are built on the three original blessings that God pronounces over humanity when He calls them His children. They're blessed. He offers them all of the bounty of the world through everything that he's made and also encourages them or commands them to rule on his behalf. And, um, you know, the, the, the word to rule still resonates in the hearts of every human being in the same way that the word to have light still resonates within the universe. I mean, there's light in the universe because God's not withdrawn the word, let there be light. And he's spoken to humanity with the word rule. And um, he wants us to rule on his behalf. But of course, we strayed from that relationship that made that possible to represent him. But there's still this desire to fulfill that, that kind of calling of our very nature. And so we tend to strive for for that status, that position, that that opportunity that that expresses this 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 God given call to rule, but without God, yeah, uh, we we do it without Him. We do it by ourselves, and so um, ambition is all over it. And and if you want, you know, my my big temptation is ambition. Um, there are much greater and um, more significant kind of examples of ambition in my life than the other two. But most people have one that is there, if you like, their, their Achilles heel. Mm. That's the place where they start. Let's uh, let's unpack that a little bit. Let's help our listeners put a, with yeah. the help of the Spirit here, put a finger on what might be their sort of Achilles heel there. Yeah, yeah. And, and if it's ambition, then the way to work it out is, are you always striving to compete? Are you always striving to win? Are you always looking to be better than you were, uh, better than others? There's a there's just a s simple kind of checklist for you. Yeah. If it's approval, then are you always looking over your shoulder and wondering what people think of you, what people uh, think of what you say, what you how you look, how you raise your children, how you lead your church? Are you more interested in what people say about the presentation that you just gave at church than the fruit that it may have produced in the lives of the people. I mean, it's very interesting one, isn't it? That and I and it's weird too because I we've 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 talked about uh, sort of a tangential topic here connected to this approval issue. Is for many people, it's uh, the way they manage approval 
and seek it is, is by retracting from culture or being super quiet or never signing up to lead or help. And it's that whole fear of man and approval thing wrapped up of like the only way I could be sure that I can manage this in this setting is to retract. A, a very wise bishop said to me when I was being trained for ministry in the Church of England, he said, underneath every virtue, there's a vice trying to get out. And under every vice, there's a virtue trying to get out. And, um, you know, it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting truth that I think that, um, you know, these folks that withdraw from uh, approval, it looks, it, it looks like it's a humble position, but it's not actually humble. It's not really humility because humility is not defined in relation to people. Humility is relate, defined in relation to our, our walk with God. And so, and so our, our withdrawal from that world is not really a sustainable strategy. Hmm. It's just it's just a cop out. So we talked about ambition and approval. What would be the checklist kind of of the things that pop up if appetite might be your your Achilles heel? If you find that you're thinking about the the appetites that need to be uh, that need to be satiated on on a fairly continuous basis then probably you've allowed yourself to be programmed to allow that voice to speak too loudly. I, uh, I once asked a, a really holy guy who led a vast movement of, of, of revival in, uh, in Nigeria, I said to him, why do you fast? And he said, appetites are like children. They will shout very, very loud. And so you have to discipline them to be quiet. And um, you discipline them until you get to the point where you only need to say a word and they'll be quiet. Um, but you, you sometimes have to go a journey in disciplining those voices to do that. And he says, that's what, that's what fasting is. Wow, that's so good. That's so good, Mike. Let's, let's throw just a little bit more meat on that for appetite. What might commonly how that crop up in people's lives? So more meat on appetite, Caesar. What, I wonder what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's get more meat on that appetite. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Because um, I'm thinking people are li listening, and, and you know how it is. Like, I know I want to try to wiggle out from underneath all three of these before we're done. <laughs> so so I, I, I want to make sure that we're, that we're hearing good examples and people can go like, ooh, that, that might be the issue for me. It's just about where the appetite goes. I mean, does it... Does it go for to the place of joy, which is a God-given gift, or does it go to the place of a kind of calculated, manufactured pleasure, which always returns to you as the creator of it? So, you know, do I need do I need three glasses of wine to actually enjoy the gift that God has given me in this wine, or could I get that gift from one glass? Hmm. You see what I mean? Yep. I mean, that's the way to think of it, I think, very often. So that would apply to all kinds of things, obviously. So it could, of course. It could be food. It could be... Sex. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Anything that we consume, perhaps, right? Yeah. Mike, one of the things that we talk about quite a bit is the thing behind the thing, or even the sin yeah. behind the sin. What sort of would be your best advice or encouragement for those people as they begin to work through these and want to be set free from these? What's your best advice for them? Some encouragement, maybe. Well, here's the thing. You can't defeat them, so give up trying. Well, say, that, is, say that again. <laughs> you can't defeat them, so give up trying. Here's two ways to think of it. The first way is that Jesus relied upon the scriptures and upon the word that his father had spoken to him, that he was already a son. So here's a thing that I do with lots of young people who come to me and say, I've got this problem with whatever it is. And I say to them, okay, this is what I want you to do for a week. I want you to find the baptism and the transfiguration narrative. And I want you to place your name where the word son is. And the first one is, of course, this is my Heath, who I love, who I'm very proud of. And then it's, this is 
Heath, whom I love, who I'm very proud of, listen to him. It changes everything because there's the very basis of everything we need. All of our appetites are met. All of our approval is found. All of our ambitions are settled right there in that moment. Wow. Mic drop. This is a mic drop. Boom. <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's so a freeing because I've spent my whole life chasing down. It's, it's almost like the, the arcade game whack-a-mole, you know, where when you try to suppress one, another pops up in another area. And so you try to smash that down for, for a few weeks or months, and then it pops up somewhere else. So it's freeing to hear, like, you're never going to do it. You're never going to do it. Give up. The, the, the best way is to listen to the voice of the father and then, this is what I do, I surrender to the presence of the Spirit because his name is the Spirit of Holiness, which means that he's better at this stuff than we are. So surrender to him and he might actually be able to supplant the tendencies to sin with the tendencies to holiness. Hey, as we finish up, Mike, we finish every episode with the, the big three, which is three takeaways that we want our listeners to leave with. Something you could get started with right now, something that we want them to really have resonating in their head for the or next few weeks. Not to miss, like if they take anything away, don't miss this. And by the way, you can always get a printable PDF of each week's big three as a free download by going to everydaydisciple.com forward slash big three. Mike, what would what would the big three for this week be? Well, for this week, from the conversation that we've just had, I would say it's really important for us to double down on our need to understand and hear the Father's voice describing us as children. So, so I think that we need to really meditate on those words spoken to Jesus, which through the covenant are spoken to us. It's not just a it's not just a, a, a literary fiction that we're pe- placing our name in that in that statement. This is my son. You know, th- wh- when we put our name there, this is Michael. This is Mike. That's a truth of the gospel. It's a truth of the covenant exchange that's taken place. I think the other thing that I'd say is, wherever anybody is with temptation, remember that the beginning of the conversation starts like this. There's no condemnation. It doesn't matter what you've done. There's no condemnation. Beautiful. And the end of the convers- the end of the conversation is this. You actually can get to a place where if you're listening to the voice of the Father and surrendering and submitting to the presence of the Spirit, like it says in the, at the end of Romans 8, which I just quoted the beginning of by saying there's no condemnation, we can actually live as more than conquerors. Wow, it's good. Those are big. People are going to want to chew on those. I want to also uh, add those those verses. Those that I'm going to put a little template where people can fill in their name in those two passages where the Father speaks to His Son. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to add that to the big three too. So folks are driving right now. They're at the gym or whatever. And they're like, "Oh, this is so good. I wish I'd have got that down." That's why we do the big three. It'll all be in there, and I'm going to add those verses with like a little fill in the blank. Because that's powerful, I, Mike. If we if uh, if we were all praying those things and saying those things over ourselves and believing what the Father b- believes is true of us, our lives would look very very different and free. I believe, and so much freer. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. This may be the last thing, really, I have to say. But it's a really interesting thing, you know. When you look at Luke's gospel, which uh, in chapter four records Jesus going into the desert. In verse one, it says he went into the desert full of the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 14, it says, he came out of the desert full of the power of the Holy Spirit. So so settling the identity in in the presence of temptation is the key to the empowered life. Say that again. I just need to hear it again. Settling our identity in the presence of temptation is the key to the empowered life. Jeez, Mike. Okay, I'm going to jam that in. This is the big four this week. It's not the big... <laughs> no, it's really, it's really good. And we, we've... Uh, regular listeners to the show know we talk a lot about identity and out of, the, out of our identity, out of our believing what's true of us, according to the Father now. Uh, from that flows our authority and privilege. And that's that's that same thing you're saying. That's so good. So wow. Good. Mike, I just want to say 
you're awesome, man. Thanks for joining us today. I hey, don't think Lisa, we like promoting too. We like promoting stuff. So what what are you working on or what do you want to tell folks about? Because right in the show notes on the site, we wanna we wanna put a link to anything you want folks to be able to connect to you with. That's very kind of you. I mean, the, the my website is michaeljamesbreen.com. So feel free to go there. There's lots of stuff on there. I love your blog, man, by the way. It's always it's always a good, yeah, good I, little heart grab. So. I'm almost certain, Mike, that if you would have done the same exact interview with an American accent, it wouldn't have been nearly as spiritual. <laughs> See, we talk about that all the time. Mike gets away with murder with this accent. Like, yeah, it's just kind. Like, it just like you could so... tell me you hate me, and it's like, <laughs> let's hug. I probably, I'm probably, I should be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mike, thanks again for being on. And I really appreciate your time and just you, you and your friendship and your leadership in my life, brother. Total, total pleasure. And a privilege to be with you guys. Thank you. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. See you later. Bye. All right, brother. I hope you'll join us again next week because we're going to keep diving into discipleship and mission and gospel fluency and hopefully helping make this all a whole lot easier for you in your everyday life. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us today. For more information on this show and to get loads of free discipleship resources, visit everydaydisciple.com. And remember, you really can live with the spiritual freedom and relational peace that Jesus promised every day.